ESPN recently launched a big initiative to cover esports in both news and broadcasts, including games like Hearthstone, Dota 2, League of Legends, and tons of others. And this week, one of their editors announced that they'll soon be adding Super Smash Brothers to their lineup. We don't know which games that includes, but competitive smashers, you have been officially validated. Yeah, and you know, like we've been saying for a while, it's it's great that Nintendo's been getting more involved with the competitive scene. You know, they had the the Nintendo World Championships, and you know, they've teamed up with uh, Disney to host a couple different, you know, more casual events, but you know, televised, mm-hmm. you know, competitive gaming events. And now this is this is another great step teaming up with ESPN. I mean, wow! Like this is exactly what they needed, especially for Super Smash Brothers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I hope it extends to more games, too, down the mm-hmm. line, because yeah, as much as Super Smash Bros. really is the face of competitive Nintendo gaming, you know, it'd be nice if there was more than just Smash Bros. Well, there's Pokémon Tournament. Do they have much else, though? Because, I mean, Mario Kart, Spl- Splatoon, Splatoon, maybe. theoretically, could. Mario Kart, I feel like, is a little too hectic. They could use more options for really competitive and balanced, you know, itemless gameplay. Yeah, it has, I don't. I don't know that Mario Kart's developed a, a spectator so scene right now, but... at this point. Right. So, right. so I, I'm with you there. Uh, Splatoon is really fun to watch, though. Uh, yeah. Pokemon Tournament, I'm sure, will be really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and hopefully, more new IP as well. Right. Uh, you know what they could do would be really cool. Make Punch Out with different. You can play as the different kinds of characters, mm-hmm. and and then you know ba- you know go up against each other and, and try to beat each other that way. It could be really interesting. Um, they could also, but they have other f- old fighting franchises that they sort of let die off. Joy Mech Fight for the Famicom. So few people listening are going to have any idea what that is. <laughs> but, I mean, they, they've done fighting games in the past that are more traditional and more, you know, esports-like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I do think they have a lot sort of in their repertoire that, that could make great competitive stuff to broadcast. Competitive F-Zero. I mean, hey, yeah. Competitive Double Dash, punching each other off the carts. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, know. Endless potential, of course. And then there's so many genres that they haven't tapped into. Uh, like yeah. They have the only RTS is Pikmin, uh, and that's a big, that's a huge, huge genre. Like two mm-hmm. of the games that you mentioned there are basically RTS style games. Um, so yeah, no, there's there's a lot of it's a, it's wide mm-hmm. open for Nintendo to kind of insert themselves in this space. I could totally imagine a sort of Smash Bros. style MOBA too, where you mm-hmm. know the characters cross over. And that, <laughs> well, that would be kind of cool. I totally see them putting that behind Amiibo though. Well, Although that's not it... too dissimilar from the business model you see in Yeah, a lot I was of actually robots. just going to say. Hello, everybody. Thank you for listening to this Nintendo Week Clip NWC. If you like what you hear, please subscribe to us here on YouTube for more highlights and discussion videos from Nintendo Week Podcast. Or subscribe to us on iTunes for weekly breakdowns of all your Nintendo news, discussion segments on subjects, games, and more, and tons of other features. Thanks for listening, and we will see you tomorrow with another NWC.